up, everyone? Thank you so much for checking out this video here on Shows, Style, and Spirit. I am Ebony, of course, and as you can see from the title of this video, I will be talking about the Love and Marriage Huntsville film, Psycho, starring Nell, Tisha, and Kimmy. I did not know that the OWN Network wanted to start featuring horror films or horror short films because definitely this falls under the horror genre, this episode, because it was absolutely insane. And we are going to talk about it all. And kudos to Dr. Shanita. She wasn't a bodyguard, Tisha. She was a friend. So I'm going to give my recap of this episode. But first, I ask that you please hit the like button on this video then YouTube will recommend this video to more people who enjoy discussing love and marriage Huntsville. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe to show style and spirit. I would definitely love to have you as one of the showstoppers. And everything that I'm saying in this video is alleged and just my opinion. And the Copyright Act of 1976 says that my fair use commentary on some of the psycho sound bites are allowed for criticism. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the episode opens up on a very normal, um, calm, peaceful note with Melody, Dr. Shanita, and Lauren arriving at their villa first. With Melody being the host, of course, she wanted to arrive there first to get things ready for the girls to arrive. Also, we saw how beautiful the resort was, and Melody showed them her suite, as well as Lauren and Dr. Shanita's suite. So it was very positive, very normal. They walked in with good spirits, and it was all good. Then we see uh, the complainers. So we have Trisha, Stormy, Kimmy, and Tisha. And I want to point out that Stormy was not complaining about anything. She was chill. She was chill mode. She realized she flew into St. Thomas. She did not have a complaining spirit. Kimmy and Tisha, they were complaining the moment that they arrived. They were complaining about having to lift their suitcases off of the conveyor belt, you know, at the airport. This is why I don't vacation without my husband. And this is why I need more reason. Where is Mark Zoe? And I don't do that. Uh, uh, uh. Kimmy, you act like you've been married for 30 years. You've been married for six years. Okay. So for the majority of your adult life, even post-college, you were not only single, but you were a single parent. You even had a kid that you took care of. So did you never take vacations with you, just you and Jalen? You never had to grab the luggage for the two of you ever? Stop complaining. That is so annoying. That's another benefit of solitude. You don't have to hear all of the bullshit over every little thing. And I want to say that when a person is not planning the trip or the event, they complain so much. They allow, they are open to that complaining spirit to guide their conversation, their thoughts, their actions, their facial expressions, their body language, because they knew that they weren't planning the trip. So they were already ready to complain. And Tisha, actually, she seems like she's down for a girl's trip. She kept saying that but she was starting to complain to copy off of Kimmy. I feel like Kimmy set the tone and then they fed off of each other. Even when they were on um, the van from the airport, Stormy was saying like, it is weird to like fly this far away and be away from my son. And Tisha said, well, once you have the second baby, you know, that kind of goes away. And I found that to be interesting that she was willing to communicate with um, Stormy about not wanting to leave her kid. But when Sunny actually opened up about um, undergoing IVF, Kimmy and Tisha just sat there on the van. They did not say, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, I hope that, you know, you do conceive. 
Nell was with them as well. And Nell Fletcher even said, you know, it's going to happen, Sonny. You're going to have the baby. Tisha and Kimmy did not give a fuck. And that was very mean spirited. They are mean girls for real. So when Sonny arrives at the airport, they did not know that she was there, that, that she was coming, and they hardly spoke to her. And Trisha didn't say anything at all. Trisha is just going hard for destiny, and she doesn't even know the ins and outs of the situation. I can't stand it when people just can't be neutral and treat someone how you want to be treated in return and just stay out of someone else's beef with that person. That is extremely high school, but we're going to get to that in a moment. So they did not know that Sunny was coming, and you know they were very cold to her. And after Stormy brought up about not uh, wanting to travel without her son, Chess, um, you know, Sunny asked her if she was going to have another baby. Stormy said, I'm going to go through a surrogate. And then Sunny said, you know, I've been going through IVF. And Stormy said, I'm so sorry. You know, she had empathy for her. But them two other heifers, uh, Kimmy and Tisha, they just sat there on the van. And, and Nell did say to her, it's going to happen as well. They are so mean. So then um, they arrive at the house and this is when the filming for Psycho starts. So um, the ladies, they find out their rooms because uh, there's a card printed with their names. I'm gonna get to Kimmy and Tisha's complaints. Remember that spirit of complaint, it was already on them. So um, Nell is complaining because not only is she like not satisfied, but no card was printed. So that falls on whoever is running the, the resort, the villa that they're staying in. They did not print that card. You know, Nell is tripping off of that. Melody repeatedly said to her, your room is right down there. You have your own space. It's spacious you know, and you're our mentor, you're the oldest, so there you go. Nell said, you're going to stop shading me about my age. But once Nell realized that she had her own room, then her complaint shifted to, well, I don't have my name on it. I don't have my name on the card. So that lets me know that you just wanted to bitch about something. Because once you were told the location of your room, that it's your own room you're not sharing, what the fuck is the problem? I cannot stand complainers. It is such a waste of time and a waste of energy. It's negative energy. And again, I feel like people complain when they're not planning it. You know, if you've watched other, other videos of mine, I've talked about when I was really religious, really um, indoctrinated, and I was very much involved in several different auxiliaries at church. And like when you plan an event for months and you may even put some of your money into it, definitely hours and taking meeting minutes and attending meetings after work and people find things to complain about. It is so annoying. It's like a slap in the face because they never did contribute to the planning of they specifically come and they're going to find something to complain about. Because once Nell realized she had her own room, I would have been like, oh my gosh, thank you, Melody. And thank you for showing me where it is. I would not have tripped because my name wasn't printed on a card. That is just finding something to complain about. And I'm not going to be ageist and say that she was acting like that because of her age. I don't even have to go there. She acts like she was sipping on stuff. She has a drink in her hand right in this scene, but they were all given drinks. But I'm wondering, did Nell sip something on the plane? Did she sip something at the airport in Huntsville before boarding the plane and then had drinks on the plane? Because her behavior, in my opinion, it was so erratic. I feel like she was a little tipsy. But nobody said that, though. I didn't hear that in anyone's confessionals or even when she gets into it with a couple of people. They didn't even say, girl, I'm going to ignore you because your ass is drunk right now. Nobody said that. So perhaps she wasn't drunk. If she was sober acting like that, 
<laughs> oh my gosh. But I'm trying to blame it on the alcohol for her. But that's the only thing that I can come up with because she was psycho. She was yelling as she normally does, the way she yells at her kids before they can finish a sentence. She was yelling as well about um, not being satisfied with the arrangements, her room, and then not having her name printed out on a card. So she was already yelling, and that's just her thing. I assume it was done to her when she was growing up, and she unfortunately is repeating that cycle. So then we have to get into this situation. Oh my gosh, this is a lot. So remember Kimmy and Tisha, they were already complaining about having to grab their luggage, okay, uh, at the airport. Trying to act like damsels in distress without their men. Grow up. But then they get really pissed when they arrive at the villa and they see that they're in the room with the three full beds. So there's three full beds. Now, remember, in last week's episode, Tisha says to Melody, can I bring a plus one? When they were at the Sage Lounge, which is Kimmy and Maurice's spot, Tisha did not say, can I bring Destiny? She said, can I bring a plus one? And Melody said, sure, I don't care who you bring. And then she decided to put them in the room with the three full beds for Tisha, Kimmy, and the plus one. I think that that's very logical and practical thinking. I would have done the exact same thing. Even more, they're not effing with Sonny, not Tisha, not Kimmy and Stormy and Nell, they're being cordial with Sonny and Trisha ain't feeling her either. So Mel Melody gives Sonny her own room. I would have done the exact same thing. I don't want to invite this young lady, Sonny, on this vacation and put her in a room with Tisha who's not going to say anything to her as well as Kimmy. And Kimmy is such a copycat. She's not even at this juncture. She ain't even that Kimmy no more. She just copies whatever Tisha does. It's like Tisha done brainwashed her or she's doing like that new film Blink Twice, like doing just all sorts of stuff to erase her memories. Like she just totally does what Tisha says. So I would have put Sunny in her own room as well. Melody gives them this explanation. They are using words like, disrespectful, disappointed in a room that you're still in a beautiful, beautiful villa. You have immaculate views and you decided to bring the plus one. The two of you are related. It makes sense. Now, Tisha sends Melody a text message after she invites Destiny. Then she says, I'm inviting Destiny on the trip. Tisha is saying this in her confessional, like this is her insurance policy and it is paid in full and she should have been able to cash it out. No, 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 baby. You thought you were slick because at the Sage Lounge, you said to Melody, can I bring a plus one? You did not say, can I bring Destiny? After you invited Destiny and you knew she was coming, then you text Melody. Don't get mad because Melody uh, upstaged you and put you in the room with three full beds. Since you want Destiny to come so bad on a trip that Melody is planning, will you be her roomie then? You be her roommate, like y'all are in a dorm room at Michigan State, go green, and the, there you go. That's your buddy while you're on this trip. I would have done the exact same thing originally because she was bringing a plus one. She's here with her sister-in-law and they ain't effing with Sonny. And then to add to that, you're going to bring destiny. So y'all be in this room with the three full beds. Tisha, don't be mad at the player. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. Okay. So then Sonny tells um, Nell to go check on Melody because she, Sonny was the one who told Melody that Kimmy and Tisha were complaining about their room. So Nell goes out to talk with Tisha and Kimmy. And this is another reason why I wonder if Nell was sipping on something. Houston, I know everybody 
was upset. You sucked up and we said, yes. Y'all don't care. have to suck this one up because I'm sandwiched in between y'all asses. Now, you know, when now when Sonny said, why don't you go out there and check on uh, Melody? 
Nell should have just went out and said, are we good? Because then they would have said, yeah, we're all right, we're good. But instead, Nell went out already turned up. She totally talks to them like she talks to her kids, okay? And, you know, Melody had to pull her to the side and calm her down. But, oh, my gosh, Nell, I feel like once she arrived at the island, she should have immediately uh, met up with somebody to go smoke something, for real. Because she was just so turned up, it was ridiculous. Melody had calmed them down. And then when Melody said, you know, if the tables were turned, me, Shanita, and Lauren, we would have kicked it in that room, no problem. Because I have so many activities planned, we're not going to really be here at home anyway. And then after that, you know, Tisha and Kimmy, they didn't want to look petty and immature and ungrateful. So then they said, oh, no, it's OK. We'll stay there. They didn't want to look like the ones that all this shuffling around is being done for. Just so the, the complaining is such negative energy and it's really pathetic. And Tisha's just mad at the game because you told afterwards, you text Melody that you were bringing Destiny and you don't F with Sunny. Sunny gets her own room and the three of y'all are together. So then the ladies have dinner. There was also some like carnival dancers in really beautiful costumes and they came out and danced for the girls and then they sat down. So Sunny was sitting across from Trisha. Stormy was sitting next to Tisha. And Tisha was sitting across from Dr. Shanita. And Dr. Shanita was to the right of Melody. And they are all sitting there talking. And, um, you know, they're talking about friendship. And Dr. Shanita was saying that she feels like a measure of friendship for her is when, you know, she's not able to do something that the person asked for. How do you react to that? You know, when I don't have the energy to meet whatever need you got, if I'm broken, if I can't do it, how you respond, you know, says to me a lot about how you are as a friend. Kimmy even said that's like the best definition I've ever heard of it. And, you know, Tisha was talking about, you know, um, I don't have to argue with people. I can just walk away and we're all adults. I can have like grown conversation. And um, Dr. Shanita said, can you sit down and break bread with someone whom you're not even friends with? She said, oh, yeah. And Stormy said, she don't like me and she's sitting next to me. Then Dr. Shanita turns to Melody and says, watch her. And then Tisha is like, you know, why are you saying watch her? And Dr. Shanita said, well, you're the one who just said that you can actually sit down and eat a meal with someone whom you do not like versus, you know, you, you keeping a healthy distance from someone that has disrespected you or meddled with you or betrayed you. Now, when they are your coworker and you're there to make money, I get it, you know, somehow interacting with them. But if it's breaking bread outside of work, you know, ideally you would stay distant from someone who has betrayed you. So in my opinion, that was what Dr. Shanita meant by saying, watch her. In Tisha's confessional, Tisha said that, you know, I didn't know Melody was bringing her bodyguard. Well, you and Dr. Shanita were having a conversation about friendship. And when you said what you said about you being able to be around a person that you do not like, that was why Dr. Shanita said to Melody, watch her. That was not being a bodyguard. That was her giving her opinion in your face, might I add, Tisha, and not behind your back, to Melody. She gave her opinion on you to Melody. And then Tisha is like feeling away because Melody said, I'm going to bring a couple of my single girlfriends. So um, obviously also seated at the table is Lauren as well. And Tisha's like, you know, why did you have to specify that they're single? There's nothing wrong with that, Tisha. I don't think that that's a major thing at all. Quite a few of you are married and some are single. Melody, Dr. Shanita, and Lauren. So it, to me, it's giving like you're feeling away 
like uh, you think single women are better or something. Tisha said, you think single women are more fun? Like nobody said that. But Nell, who was sitting to the right of Tisha, Stormy was to her left. Nell said, well, it is a difference. Because when you're married, you know, you have rules when you go on vacation with your friends. You're not going to do certain things. You have boundaries. And everyone understood that. But Tisha was so quick to be offended that she was just like, you know, why did you say that they were single? Tisha and Kimmy, they are so, um, you know, touchy and complainy. I just created a new word, complainy. C-O-M-P-L-A-I-N-E-Y. They are so complaining that I would not want to go on vacation with them. Kimmy said in her confessional, this is why I don't do girl trips. Honey, don't nobody want to do a trip with you. Okay. So then Melody asked Sunny in front of everyone if she was doing okay. Because they were seated down for dinner and Sunny was quiet. So I'm, I'm glad that Melody is thinking of Sunny and wanting her to feel comfortable because after all, she is a part of the cast. So why should she be excluded from the cast trip, the girls trip? So, you know, Trisha was also asked about, you know, how you're treating Sunny. And she was like, you know, I don't have a problem with her, but I'm not going to be cordial with her like that because, you know, um, Destiny considered her a friend. Whoa, 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 Trisha. I know you ain't talking about nobody. When you have a husband who lives just three hours away in Atlanta and you live in with your ninja on the side, okay, you're in no position to judge anybody. So miss me with trying to judge Sonny. And Melody broke it down for Dr. Shanita. She said, Sunny was a producer for the show. She produced Destiny. Destiny had a boyfriend at the time. Sunny is now married to the boyfriend. And Dr. Shanita said, well, they should be mad at the man. And Melody said, I said the exact same thing. And then, you know, Kimmy and Tisha, they were silent. It's like vacationing with little kids. Oh my gosh. But I could not believe Trisha had the nerve to judge. And then the episode, it was pretty much, um, that was pretty much it. We're going to see Destiny arrive in the next episode and uh, go from there. Destiny is going to get into it with Melody about coleslaw. So I feel like um, this episode was definitely giving a new genre. It was not reality TV. It was horror films, okay? Uh, all they needed was to sit a doll out in one of the chairs, Chucky or Annabelle, or maybe come up with like a, a an American Girl doll, <laughs> something, okay, and make her look crazy. And that would have fit right in, honey, because some people was acting possessed, baby, by either that complaining spirit, that complaining spirit, or just downright crazy, always yelling at people, okay, Nell. But I thank you all so much for checking out this video. What did you think about the episode? Have you ever planned something and dealt with complainers? How did you handle it? Did you just ignore them or did you tell them, you know, we put in a lot of work into this and it seems like all you do is complain. This episode also reminded me of like, if your family does family reunions and it's your city's turn to host the family reunion, and people are just complaining left and right. They even complain about the family reunion t-shirt. How do you complain about the t-shirt? A family that prays together stays together. That's it. But, you know, Negroes are going to find something to complain about when it is not their event, when it is not their trip. But Melody handled the foolishness well. And I hope that you all are having a fantastic weekend. I posted on my community tab about the film Blink Twice. It's definitely a thriller. It takes twists and turns. And, you know, it's about being charmed by a billionaire public figure. And, you know, you're on the private jet. Yeah. And, you know, some of these girls, they don't know these 
these rich celebrities. They don't even know them personally, but they're just so geeked that they get to kick it with them. And a lot of that stuff in that movie, we've heard about in news reports, you know, you, where you go to the party, you have to turn in your cell phones. That's a huge red flag because they don't want you recording something, you know, and then folks are, you know, they're with substances, you know, and, um, things could happen. And I don't have to say any celebrities' names because you all already know what time it is, but that's what the film is about. Yikes. And kudos to Lenny Kravitz's daughter, Zoe Kravitz. You know, her mom is Lisa Bonet or Denise from The Cosby Show. Zoe directed the film Blink Twice. It is her directorial debut. She actually co-wrote the movie as well. And it stars Channing Tatum, who is Zoe's fiance. He's from the Magic Mike films and White House Down with Jamie Foxx when Jamie Foxx played the president. And um, also, I was going to say something. Oh, and the, the female lead is Naomi Aki. She played Whitney Houston in the film I Want to Dance with Somebody that came out Christmas of 2022. So I love that film as well. I actually bought that film here on YouTube so I can stream it whenever. But I think it's still on Netflix. But um, I thank you again for checking out this video. Please hit the like button on this video as it is a free way of supporting the channel. And please subscribe to Show Style and Spirit if you have not already done so. And I will talk with you all very soon. Bye.